1995, Dale Earnhardt had a serious offer to run the Indy 500. It's almost unthinkable that the Intimidator could have been in the greatest spectacle in racing, but the opportunity was there if he wanted it. But it's Earnhardt has won the Indianapolis 500 mile race. After winning his seventh Winston Cup championship in 1994, what was left for Earnhardt to accomplish? Perhaps winning the Indy 500. In 1994, John Andretti showed it was possible to run at Indianapolis and Charlotte in the same day. It required a lot of flying and preparation, but it could be done. Could Earnhardt be tempted to do the same? Around the time of the 1995 Daytona 500, news leaked that the seven-time champion did in fact get an offer to run in that year's Indy 500, and it came from one of the top team owners in the series, John Menard. Menard had a major IndyCar team that raced once a year, only at the Indy 500, and every year he spent roughly $6 million on the Indy program, about the same as some teams spent during the entire season. He even had his own engine brand, buying the Buick engine program after General Motors left IndyCar at the end of 1994, and Menard wanted the Intimidator to drive for him. What would a Dale Earnhardt Indy 500 team look like? When the rumor first surfaced in February, Menard's team had only Scott Brayton under contract. Ari Leyendijk was another driver under consideration and was eventually hired to race at Indy. If Earnhardt took the offer to run there, it's possible he would have driven the 40 car instead of Lion Dyke. It's also possible that Earnhardt and Lion Dyke both would have gotten rides and would have been a three car super team. But unfortunately, Earnhardt never had any interest in running Indianapolis if it distracted from the Coke 600. The season long Winston Cup standings meant any points given up in May could be the difference between winning and losing the championship six months later. Earnhardt badly wanted to win an eighth championship and wasn't going to let anything distract from that. He refused to talk publicly about the offer, simply calling it a great opportunity and saying, quote, it's nice to be asked to drive. Earnhardt's public relations manager, John Rhodes, said Dale likely never considered doing it, and Menard didn't want to talk about it either. At Indianapolis in 1995, Team Menard was very fast. Scott Brayton won the pole at a speed of 231.6 miles per hour. Ari Leyendijk qualified second. Had he taken the offer, Earnhardt may have qualified on the front row at over 230 miles per hour. In the race, Brayton had engine problems while Leyendijk finished seventh. As for Earnhardt actually driving an Indy car, he admitted he had more interest than you might expect. In mid-May, he acknowledged that he might never race an Indy car, but he really wanted to test one sometime within the next year. At the end of the month, Menard said Dale had an open invitation to test any time he wanted. It's at this point where the truth ends and urban legends start to appear. Did Earnhardt actually ever test an Indy car? There's no evidence to say he ever did, but you can find anything on the internet, including rumors of a secret test for Dale at Indianapolis. Allegedly, people have told stories that Earnhardt ran a simulated rookie test where he hid his identity by never taking off his full face helmet, something he would wear on very rare occasions. It's doubtful that story was actually true, but the only thing we know for sure is that the offer was there. But isn't it something to imagine Dale Earnhardt in the Indy 500? Back home again in Indiana, and it seems that I can see the gleaming candlelight.